Moving can be so hard, and we moved to a new house that does not have a pantry. So my sweet friend gave me an old vintage armoire that I am going to do my best. It is very scary, but I'm going to do my best to turn this into a pantry. So come along, let's do this, and let's turn this scary vintage armoire into a pantry. Let's talk about this piece. This is a rough little hutch, very vintage, broken glass. I need a pantry. We're gonna turn this into a pantry, so whew, it's pretty rough. And some cool legs. I'm gonna try to put on the bottom of it. Let's see how it goes. I looked up some different ideas and this beautiful piece kind of is my inspo. Now, I know this piece is not gonna look just like that. There's a lot of factors going into it that are gonna make it difficult, but we're gonna do our best to, um, you know, come close to that inspo. Okay, quick tip. If you have trouble putting on your gloves, just take them, blow them like you were blowing up a balloon and then stick your hand in there. It helps so much. As you can see, I didn't do that with this left hand and I was on the struggle bus. I grabbed my Amy Howard Clean Slate Cleaner. I use lots of different cleaners, but this one really seems to get some of the extra grime off. And since this piece was very dirty, I decided this was the cleaner for me today. I scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed, but lots of things went wrong. So let's talk about the first thing. So like I said, we just moved here and we had movers moving everything in our home from our furniture to all of my work things. And I was so excited to get this hydraulic lift right before we moved. I got to use it about two or three times. And when we got here, it did not work. I was so sad and so frustrated. It is one of my favorite tools. And I'm gonna work on figuring it out and fixing it, but today's not the day. So I decided to move on and start sanding my piece, and guess what? My shop vac that I usually connect to my sander died. I think maybe it died in the move also. They're killing me. But thank the Lord, my surf prep did not die. It is one of my favorite tools and I would have been heartbroken. I went ahead and started sanding down the top of this piece and it had some beautiful wood. The rest of the piece had lots of damage and pressed wood, so this will be our only stained area. And back to it. I am loving how this piece looks. Y'all, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to be here. We have so many fun furniture flips, DIYs, and tips. So no vacuum means I get to dust it off and that's okay. We're going to get a vacuum soon. But if you don't have a shop vac, that's okay. This is what you can do, just dust it all off. So I sanded the rest of the piece just to get it ready for paint. This is like a light scuff sand just to prepare it to where it will hold that paint really well. I removed the hardware from the drawers and it needed a little bit of extra oomph. There we go. So one of my favorite ways to paint is to spray. So I grabbed my Wagner 3500 sprayer and I am going to try using a plastic insert. This will help my cleanup time, but I've never used one before, so I'll let you know what I think of it. I'm painting Infusion Mineral Paint Manor Green, and the company honestly does not recommend spraying it, but from my experience, it sprays just fine and goes on really smooth. If you've never used a sprayer before, this one is a great beginner sprayer. It is easy to use, user friendly, and has a really good finish. Okay. 
So I got started painting and I will tell you, I did not tape anything off. This sprayer is actually really detailed and I can get really close to specific areas. Now there are, sometimes I go back with a paintbrush to get any detail areas that I missed, but overall this sprayer has great coverage. The only problem I had was that it was over a hundred degrees outside and after I sprayed this piece bubbled up all those little areas that you see yeah little bubbles where I had to sand them and repaint with a brush not as smooth as I would like but we got it fixed. So after that, I decided to take my piece inside and cool off. Now this is a new home and I don't have a really great studio. I'm working on it. I'm working on getting a place to work. So I'm working in our front room, but I had to get rid of this mirror. It was broken all the way through and I had never gotten a mirror out of a piece before like this. So I taped it off in order to keep the glass shards from going everywhere and then lightly hit it with a hammer. This worked really well. And then I decided, you know what? I probably ought to get some gloves. I did wear eyewear, protective eyewear to make sure any shards didn't come out on my face <laughs> and then stuck a box below it so that the pieces had somewhere to go. I am crossing my fingers that I don't get bad luck from breaking all of this mirror, but it was already broken, so I should be good, right? Getting this mirror out was difficult, but super satisfying. All right, let's do the interior of this piece. This is the part I've been scared about. I grabbed some gorgeous white paint because I just think we need to brighten up this piece on the inside. And using a roller just helps coverage be so smooth and beautiful and it helps to cover more space quicker. I'm using a 3 8 3 8 inch. That is really difficult to say. 3 8 inch nap roller and that really helps cover the space. And then in the corners I'm using my zebra triangular brush. But it can't all go easily. Here's what happened. Pumpkin, where have you been? Oh no, on the couch. Oh my gracious. Oh no, new house. I grabbed my handy dandy Windex because uh, like they say in that movie, my big fat Greek wedding, Windex fixes everything. <laughs> I used a window scraper and got most of it off of the tile. That is a amazing tip, by the way. Keep that Windex handy. I decided to add some really fun peel and stick wallpaper on the back of this piece just to give it some more just fun character. I had my daughter help me. That actually is the daughter who taught me to use Windex because she got nail polish in the carpet when she was two years old. No, no hard feelings. Though. And then I just used a box knife to go around the edges and clean it up. Then followed that by painting the interior of the drawers and doors with a contrasting blue. So I didn't use tape when painting, but I definitely do when I'm staining because I am pretty messy with the stain. I taped around the edges of this gorgeous sanded wood and then grabbed my stain and started covering the top of this piece. Did you see how the tape came in really handy there? 
Now let's talk about what went wrong next. These legs totally went wrong, but I'm gonna show you the coolest tip anyway. This is really one of my favorite new tips and it's so simple and so easy. Look at the difference in these two legs. That literally was maybe five minutes of sanding. Really cool tip. Let me know if you use it. All right, so I followed it by staining the legs and they took the stain really well because they had just been sanded. Now I will tell you I added leg mounting plates and just assumed that this wood was going to be um, thick enough and heavy duty enough to hold these legs. It was not. Whenever I stood the piece up, it was not only wonky, it just started to cave in on itself. These legs were definitely too long for the piece and it just didn't look good with it. So I decided I was still going to add legs, but I needed to add some more wood that would stabilize the legs and make it much more sturdy and durable. But while I was getting the wood ready and cutting it with my miter saw, I found a new friend. Look how cute he is. <laughs> He's so cute. I did my best to put him in the grass, but he really loved me. <laughs> No, 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 okay, let's not. I told my new friend goodbye and got the legs put on. Up next was putting the textured wallpaper on the front. I used a straight edge to keep my line and used a box knife to cut it, then carefully just peeled that paper apart. I then <laughs> used some Mod Podge glue, which I did not mean to throw it all over it, but it worked out. So I spread it all over and then placed the wallpaper on top. I thought about leaving it white, but the contrast was just so dramatic that it overtook the look of the pantry. So I decided to paint the textured wallpaper and I am in love with the look. All right, guys, we have made it to the end. Are you ready? Here is the before. And here is the after. I am absolutely in love with this look. I love that I have a new pantry in my home and that I know that I went through all the hardships to get here. It may not be perfect, it may not be exactly like my inspo pick, but it is mine and I am absolutely in love with it. I would love to hear what you think, what you would have done, and how you would have gotten through all of those obstacles. As always, thank you so much for being here with the Furniture Flippers Guide. If you haven't subscribed, please be sure to do that, and I can't wait to see you next time. Remember, you've got this. All right, it's time to fill the pantry. Thank you.